That is true. That is the property of logarithms. This is the first one. Um, it's the power property. I didn't put the name of it there. It's the power property. That says if you have log, ba uh, log of a to the b, then you can move that exponent to become a coefficient and those two logarithms, even though they look pretty different, uh, they actually have the same value. Log of 8 has the same value as 3 times the log of 2. Uh, and this applies to any logarithm. Okay, Any base, the natural log, any of them, um, you just write this, the exact same log. So if you've got log base 2, you can do that. If you've got the natural log, you can do that using this property. Okay, So, um, let's look at actually using this property a little bit. Uh, we're going to rewrite these uh, logarithms right here using the above property. Sometimes we're going to move the exponent, sometimes we're going to move a coefficient. So log of 5 cubed can <clears throat> be rewritten as 3 log of 5. Sometimes it's helpful to move the exponent. Sometimes it's helpful to move the coefficient. So 2 log of 6 can be written as log of 6 squared, which we know is also the log of 36. We can do this with variables as well. The log of x to the fourth is equal to 4 log of x. 5 log of y is equal to the log of y to the fifth. If we want to condense it, if we have two logs that we're adding together, log of a plus log of b, then we can condense that into a single logarithm of the product of a and b, a times b, or vice versa. If we want to expand it out, if we have the log of a product, then that's the sum of two logs. Again, this applies to any log. Log base 2, log base 5, the natural log. It applies to any logarithm. Um, this property does. So, let's expand using this property. Okay, again, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. It's the log of x plus the log of y. Okay, the log of x times y is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. The log of 7 times 6, it's equal to the log of 7 plus the log of 6. Log base 2 of 11 times 3, log base 2 of 11, plus log base 2 of 3. You can also do more than two things, 3x and y, then we would split that up, log base 5 of 3, plus log base 5 of x, plus log base 5 of y. Now, to be honest, uh, expanding it doesn't really do us as much of good uh, later on today, we'll use the idea of condensing more so than expanding. Um, expanding does help us out, though. Say, for example, I asked you, well, what is the log of 42? And I had given you some select values of some logarithms, and log of 7 and log of 6 were two of those, and I wanted you to tell me, well, what's the log of 42 without using your calculator? Because okay, obviously you have your calculator, you can just type in log of 42, but if I say you do it without a calculator, then if you know this property, you know that you can just add the value of log of 7 plus the log of 6, and that will give you the log of 42. Okay? So that's kind of where expanding comes in handy, but really condensing is what's going to do us uh, more good. So it's more important that we understand how to condense logarithms. When we're adding two of them together. So the log of u plus the log of v condenses into the log of u times v. 
Now, it's pretty important to put the UV there in parentheses uh, because if you don't, it's a little unclear of, okay, well, is it just the U that's in the logarithm or is it the U and the V inside the logarithm? So just push comes to shove, put it in parentheses. Okay, log of 8 plus the log of 3. That's the log of 8 times 3, which we can, of course, write as the log of 24. Log base 2 of 6 plus log base 2 of 11. Condenses log base 2 of 6 times 11 or log base 2 of 66. And then a simple example when we have three of them, we just, as long as its addition is both of the uh, uh, operations there, then it is log of x, y, z. Okay, so let's expand some using the subtraction slash quotient property. Log of x over y is simply the log of x minus the log of y. The log of 7 over 6 is the log of 7 minus the log of 6. Log base 2 of 11 over 3. Log base 2 of 11 minus the log base 2 of 3. And finally, log base 5 of A over B. Log base 5 of A minus log base 5 of B. Now, you may be wondering, why are we doing such simple examples? Okay, trust me, there is a reason. I have taught this, mm, pretty sure I've had to teach these properties of logs since I've been teaching. This is my sixth year now. And usually I just jump into the more difficult examples and people get everything jumbled up. Uh, they can't remember the properties and everything, so I've kind of decided to take this approach break it down, do the simple ones, get them kind of ingrained in your memory, and then we'll step it up and do some, some that are a little bit more uh, involved. Okay, um, so I know it seems a little tedious right now, but I promise you it's for a reason. So if we're going to condense the log of u minus the log of v, that is simply the log of u over v, the log of 8, minus the log of 3, the log of 8 divided by 3, log base 2 of 6 minus log base 2 of 11, log base 2 of 6 over 11, and log base 9 of x minus log base 9 of y, log base 9 of x over y. Okay. Again, just trying to illustrate to you, you can use any log any log base, I know we haven't had any natural logs in these, but it also applies to the natural log as well. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do when we expand this is, there, well, there are a couple of different things we can do. I think it's easiest to apply that exponent to both the terms inside the parentheses. Okay, so when we do that, we're raising a power to another power, so we multiply so that's a to the fourth, b to the sixteenth. Okay, power to a power you multiply, so four times four is sixteen. Now I'm going to split it into two logarithms. Log base seven of a to the fourth plus log base seven of b to the sixteenth. And then I'm going to use my power property to move those powers to become coefficients. 4 log base 7 of A plus 16 log base 7 of B. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, we're getting ready to use this in um, solving some equations. Let's do one with a natural log. Okay, I've been telling you all along that the natural log uses the same properties. Okay, it does. So first thing that I see here is I see a quotient. So that is 
the natural log of x to the fifth minus the natural log of y to the fifth. And then we need to move those exponents. So 5 natural log of x minus 5 natural log of y. Now, condensing is actually the one that's uh, more helpful when it comes to, we're getting ready to look at some equations and we're going to need to be able to condense some logarithms when they're on the same side of the equation. So let's look at condensing 6 natural log of u minus 5 natural log, yes ma'am, I'm sorry. Okay, more. If we're going to condense these two, before we can put them together, you have to move the coefficients. Okay, it's almost, it's exactly the same of what we were just doing with expanding. Moving the exponents to become coefficients was the last thing that we did there, so it's going to be the first thing that we do here. So we're going to move the 6 and we're going to move the 5. So we've got the natural log of u to the 6th minus the natural log of v to the 5th. Then we're subtracting these, those two logarithms, so that becomes a quotient. The natural log of u to the sixth over v to the fifth. Okay, same thing with example D here. We start by moving the exponents. <clears throat> log base 5 of a to the 24th plus log base 5 of b to the 6th. We're adding those two logarithms, so it becomes the log of their product. I would put parentheses around this, just to be clear that both of those are inside the logarithm. 